This morning, I'm going to talk to you about the Nivarana. The word Nivarana means the great cloud or the darkness which exists inside of us when we have not defeated the hindrances. But to defeat the hindrances is not a harsh term and should not be looked upon as a negative job. That is not correct. Actually, by letting go of the hindrances, one by one, we strengthen loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity in the Brahma Viharas. So actually, these are very related to each other. One of the dangerous things that holds us back from path and prevents us from making smooth progress in our meditation is when we look upon the hindrance as an enemy. The hindrance is innocent. The hindrance doesn't do anything to us. Actually, anything in regards to the hindrance is coming from us. When we look at it this way, then we see we cannot regard the hindrance as an enemy. Perhaps we could say it's an unwanted guest. We understand the hindrances for what they really are. This is what is important. We are no more to be caught up by the sensual baits that they lure us with. They tap into past reactions and make us repeat them again. But they don't make us do it, actually. Our own volition subconsciously moves us to react. We are able to see our sense experiences for what they really are. And if we are able to do that, sometimes pleasant, sometimes unpleasant, but always these things are impermanent. There is no reason to be upset. We are then able to rise above the bodily experiences in the mental realm where our experiences are formed and acted out. Now, we know we have lessons we can learn from the hindrances. So rather than being afraid of them, or struggling to compete with them, to uh, fight with them, we need to look more closely at how do the hindrances operate. First of all, when I said they are not a negative, they could be partially a positive. What I'm referring to is that if we were to defeat lust and greed, we would make our loving kindness become stronger. If we were consciously watching out for hatred and aversion, then we would strengthen our compassion. If we were to avoid consciously sloth and torpor, laziness or sleepy mind, by paying more attention to getting the proper sleep and exercise, then we would be much happier and joy very likely would come up to join us. If we defeat the idea of doubting everything, then we would have no more discontent and we would probably let go of aversion and we would strengthen our equanimity. So, once again, this is another level of causal relationship between the Brahma Vihara development or any kind of meditation development. We've already said that if you are practicing loving kindness, 
thoughts of ill will become weak. So that's the counter to practice. If we're practicing compassion, active compassion, then that one will weaken any thoughts of cruelty. When we're practicing joy and sharing our joy with others, we are weakening discontent. We cannot have thoughts of discontent when we are in joy. And when we create uh, equanimity as much as possible, when we're working on our equanimity, no thoughts of aversion will come up. So it's clear from what we find in the text that overcoming the hindrances is not merely a negative exercise. They each entail a positive mental image to accomplish. And this is very interesting because in that way, the hindrances are our teachers. This afternoon, I'll do another one. And it will explain a little bit more closely how there are two ways of abandoning hindrances. Two distinct different ways. And one is an extreme struggle. And one is an extreme example of activating knowledge and wisdom. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.